Hey everybody, Alex from SeemsGoodMagic.com here, joined by Sam Rubin, regular Seems Good Magic contributor, longtime streamer. People loving those constructed decks, Sam? Is that, are you still grinding constructed hard? Yeah, um, I think last week we streamed 57 hours or so of uh, constructed. The way it happens on stream is we mostly play standard because that's the most relevant format, but um, we offer like a donation thing. So people that donate and people that are subscribers, they can send me their deck and we'll test it and tune it for them on stream. So that's like a kind of cool thing that's happening right now. Sam is a good innovator, and when you're grinding that much in a week, that is insane, my friend. That is really impressive. All right, so we've this is what we've decided to do. So I admit it's my fault. I'm late on this set review thing. So instead, we're just going to go through all the mis all the mythics and rares. One video, we're just going to grind them out. We're going to let you know what we think of them and talk about the new mechanics a little bit. But let's get to it right away. So we got Nicol Bolas, God Pharaoh, four colorless. And Grixis Colors comes in with 7 loyalty, plus 2. Target opponent exiles cards from the top of their library until they exile a non-land card. Until in turn you can cast that card without paying its mana cost. Plus 1. Each opponent exiles 2 cards from his or her hand. Minus 4. 7 damage to an opponent or creature an opponent uh, that opponent controls. Or minus 12. Exile each non-land permanent your opponent's control. So all of those abilities are great. Free spell for plus... Get rid of two cards in hand, kill something, or them, or get rid of all of their non-land cards. I mean, I don't know how this... How, I don't know how anybody could say this card is bad. No, the, the card's definitely not bad. Um, the question I get asked the most regarding Nicol Bolas is, is Nicol Bolas going to be good in Aetherworks Marvel? And the answer is no. Um, it doesn't do enough, right? Like... Ulamog was able to not only come into play and blow up your opponent's two best things, but then also threaten their life total and threaten to end the game quickly. This, uh, at best, kills, like, one of your opponent's things, and then also doesn't threaten to end the game quickly. So this isn't a, a card to be played there. Maybe it's better than, like, a Sphinx in, like, blue-based control decks, but that, you know, the jury's still out on that. I hope it gets played. I think it's awesome. It's very, very powerful and flavorful, but I'm not sure if it's placed and constructed. It, I mean, you obviously play it in draft, I guess, unless the draft format's super fast. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, if you get Nicol Bolas, people are at least going to want to play Nicol Bolas in draft, and it would be it would be hard to resist. Uh, but yeah, it's three colors, so that's already a hurdle there. But I mean, the real question is, as we've both played a ton of Amonkhet, it was a fast format. It's a super fast format. Aggro was winning. Aggro was what was consistent. And that made a lot of really powerful cards that, if they were in any other format, not so powerful in Amonkhet, like Lay Claim. You look at it and you're like, wait, I steal their best thing. I can cycle it early. Why would this card not be good? Well, it's because blue wasn't that good. Seven mana spells aren't that good. So the, the real question is, now that we're going into almost a brand new format because Hour of Devastation, uh, from what our crack team research discovered, it's going to be two Hour of Devastation packs and one Amonkhet pack. So that does tend to mean the format will be dramatically different. We're going to have two more of a brand new set. So will it slow down? Possibly. And if it does, maybe we can start to play these six and seven drop spells. And maybe the cards from Amonkhet that, you know, at the end weren't that good because they were too slow, suddenly become better. So let's start looking through some more of these mythics and rares. Next, we have an odd little god cycle here. The Locust God for a blue and a red for a 4-4 four -four legendary god creature. It has flying. And whenever you draw a card, create a 1-1 one -one blue and red insect creature token with flying in haste. And you can pay... Two, a blue and a red, draw a card, discard a card, and when it when Locust God dies, return it to its owner's hand at the beginning of the next end step. So this is the uh, this is the triggered ability that has replaced indestructible on gods. Uh, Sam, what are your initial thoughts about this one in particular? So this one in particular I think is okay. Um, obviously making the one ones is insane. The problem is, is that six mana is a lot, and it dies to everything. I mean, it dies to Grasp of Darkness. Um, it dies to all the murder effects. It dies to Glorybringer, right? It dies to all, all the things. Obviously, with all of these mythics, they're going to be playable in probably first picks and draft. They're just very powerful. This set looks significantly slower than 
um, Amonkhet. And so the draft format, because there are those two hour packs, is going to slow down a little bit, I would uh, think. So all these are playable in draft and, and pre and you know at your pre-release at your limited events. What I would say though is that the next ability, the when the locust god dies or when any god dies, return to its owner's hand, is a really interesting part. I think it allowed R and D to push the cards a little further. Like when the cards were indestructible, they really had to be careful because if you make like a six six indestructible flyer for three mana and it you can turn it on too easily, then it's just going to be bonkers. So yeah. when everything was indestructible, it was much harder for R and D to like push the cards and make them interesting. But I, I I really like the design on this one. I'll say it dies to everything, so I don't love it in constructed. But I think it looks awesome. I like the art. I love blue red. I mean, w w what's not to like here? And it's it's got to be fun with you know you play like a trial of knowledge, draw three, get three dudes, swing with a bunch of hasty dudes, just like even a tormenting voice, two mana, draw two discard one get two more so it just it's gonna make those any sort of card draw effect that much more intense to play against right um, also you can play on defense here. uh what was that you can play it on defense too like you, you oh yeah you play true. this and then you play like and then you cycle hieroglyphic illuminations or you cycle whatever you know you have seven mana you slam this on your your opponent's like okay well i'm gonna attack for lethal you cycle something you get a one one you block you blow them out and then you like you know draw eight cards the next turn and you win so it's also a fantastic point that it works so well with cycling too mm -hmm. so all your cyclers suddenly turn into draw a card get a one one flyer haste so that's pretty nice so yes the locust god's great we'll just quickly go through the other two uh there's the scarab god and the scorpion god so they both have the when they die return them to their owner's hand effect like we said replacing the indestructibility the blue-black one is the Scarab God. It's a 5-5. Five, five. At the beginning of your upkeep, each opponent loses X life, and you scry X, where X is the number of zombies you control. And then it's two of blue and a black. Exile target creature card from a graveyard. Create a token that's a copy of it, except it's a 4-4 four, four black zombie. Now, isn't this the Eternalize uh, mechanic from this set, too? Yeah, you're basically making it so that Every, you know, you can just pay four mana if the Scarab Gods and play and eternalize anything that you want. Okay. And, uh, I mean, this is pretty cool that you get these. It makes its own army, and then it gets to use its own ability to make them lose life in Scry X. Uh, so this one seems fantastic to me. I mean, besides the fact that it's efficient, five mana, five, five, in blue and black, very efficient. Um, and then you start making four four you make an army of four fours and it's from a graveyard too so it's not just yours you get to steal their creatures from them as well so yes i think as we said this one's going to be bomb unlimited um are i guess the question is are any of these going to be constructed playable in your mind so first of all what i'll say is i think this one's strictly better than the last one and this one's one less mana so if you're going to play okay. one you're going to play like strictly better right five five doesn't die to grasp of darkness doesn't die to glory bringer um makes an army lets you control your draw steps while also creating guys like and making I, them lose life yeah right i i mean blocks bristling hydra like i i think this one's blocks voltaic brawler this one's better um and it's one less mana the scorpion god is is the wild card it's a six five for uh for five mana of course i know we haven't exactly gotten there yet but the ability to put a minus one minus one counter on creatures and also have them die to minus one, minus one counters, make something like Jund Hapatra possibly good in standard. I messed around with an Hapatra deck a while ago. Hapatra is the one black, one green, two, two. Whenever a one, one, a minus one, minus one counter is placed on a creature, you make a one, one snake with death touch. Um, there are a lot of minus one, minus one counter interactions. And uh, you, you can kind of get into this place where you're like sacrificing things, making scorpions, uh, or making death touch snakes have nest of scarabs making one ones and you know you can you can get into this like combo deck space and that was ultimately the issue with the deck was that it was too much of like trying to do math puzzles and playing a combo deck instead of actually interacting whereas yeah. this kind of lets you interact because if you're able to splash that last color red then you can all of a sudden like put minus one minus one counters on their creatures when you want to and you know then make extra snakes stuff like that you can all of a sudden have like a way to deal with flyers. So I, I think this, this is very interesting. 
That is an interesting card. So yeah, just to clarify, this is the black-red one. It's a 6-5. It reads, whenever a creature with a minus one, minus one counter on it dies, draw a card, and then one, a black, and a red, and you can put a minus one, minus one counter on another target creature. So kills things, lets you draw cards, good value, efficient. Uh, all of them playable and limited. Sam's speculating uh, on the constructed playability of them. Um, I assume this is all three of them. This is all we're going to see of, of the... There's no multi more multicolored gods, are there? No. Um, are they? I mean, but Hour of Devastation isn't linked to any other set besides Amonkhet, so we're just not getting, like, two more. I would expect five color pairs. I guess we're not getting them. That's so I guess, the, since it's the Hour of Devastation, I assume that everything is going to be linked to Grixis, like the Nicobolus colors, the dark colors, if you will. No green, no white um, so I assume that's the flavor of this idea of why we're seeing this. Mm -hmm. Um, that's obviously going to make some of the multicolor cards from, uh, Amonkhet worse out of pack three. Uh, but so be it moving on the gods, definitely interesting. I'm, I'm very interested in playing these in limited. They look like a lot of fun. Oh, and, sure. uh, that was a good observation. I wonder if you're right about this whole indestructibility being replaced by this replace this, uh, triggered ability solely because of design space maybe being limited with indestructible cards. Probably true. Next we have Samet the Tested. Two, a red and a green. It's a four loyalty planeswalker Samet. Plus one, up to one target creature gains double strike until end of turn. Minus two, it deals two damage divided as you choose among one or two target creatures and or players. Minus seven, search your library for up to two creature uh, and or Planeswalker cards, put them out of the battlefield and shuffle your library. Now I think a lot of people are sort of underwhelmed by this one, mostly because it's four for four, which is fine, but it's minus two and it only deals two divided as you choose among one or two target creatures and players. So does not protect itself particularly well. And then the plus one really just lends itself to creature-based decks. And then the minus seven, which would take you, what, four turns? To, well, you play it, you up it, and then two more turns. So yeah, on the fourth turn that you have it out, you're able to search up two creatures and or planeswalkers at best and put them on the battlefield. So yes, immediate reaction is that this card is very underwhelming. Do you have that same impression? Yeah, I mean, we're, we're, we're five minute mythics in, and I haven't seen anything that I think is going to be a four of in a standard deck. Okay, and that's, like, a, yeah, that's a good point. Like, I, I don't uh, know what else you want. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So, all right, let's move on to some of these, uh, some more mythics here. We have Crested Sun Mare, three and two white, five, five horse mythic. Other horses you control have indestructible. At the beginning of each end step, if you gained life this turn, create a five, five white horse creature token. So this card seems like a lot of fun to me. Um, disregard all the abilities, and it's a five mana, five, five, which is still going to be playable and limited. Um, gaining life, obviously one of the main things that white does. This interacts super positively with lifelink. So I think we're going to see, um, do you think we're going to see something like this being built around and constructed with lifelink creatures? Could this be a thing? Yeah, it could. I think I'd rather play it in like a control shell with like renewed faiths or something just so that, you know, just so that you could like, renewed cycle renewed faith on their like hold up a counter or cycle renewed faith on their turn and then make a five five like i don't know what i'm gonna say about this card because i've a lot of people have speculated on it is that the flavor text is the best part it, it is, is evidence that yeah. some pure corner of the world must still exist like we're just we're just understanding that like horses and unicorns are like the best part of society and <laughs> I, I don't know it's fantastic <laughs> So yeah, I'm actually I'm not I'm not convinced. I remain unconvinced that this is a solid build around. Now, if there were horses with lifelink in standard, then I could actually see it because you play this, you have a lifelink indestructible horse that's just making you more indestructible horses every turn. That would can, be kind of cool. Can we just get a rule cha change to make like centaurs horses? Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> Why can't it be horses and centaurs? I mean, they're they're. They should get like half indestructible or something like that. Some <laughs> sort of something like that. All right, next is Unesh, Cryo Sphinx Sovereign. Or Cre I don't know if that's how you spell Cryo. That's a weird way to. I don't know what a Cryo Sphinx is. We're going to find out. Four and two blue. Four, four flying legendary Sphinx. Sphinx spells you cast, cost two less to cast. 
And whenever it or another Sphinx enters the battlefield under your control, reveal the top four cards of your library. An opponent separates those cards, two piles. Put one pile in your hand, the other into your grave. So it's it's a fact or fiction Sphinx that makes your other Sphinx size Sphinxes cheaper. Um, not super impressed with this one either. In limited, it's great. Um, is it good enough for constructed solely because it's a maybe as a one of in a control deck because it's a one it's it's a win con that also lets you factor fiction, but wasn't the beauty of factor fiction that you play it at instant speed so then you can leave up your counter spells? Yeah, so this is what I have to say is that we're seven mythics in and we haven't seen any mythic that's gonna be played as a four of in standard. <laughs> which means if mythics are bad, then aggro is good, so buy all the red cards now. Just buy all the red yeah. cards. All right, that Sam has spoken. Yeah, if this had flash, you know, it would be funny if if this had flash and it was seven mana. I think it would actually be significantly better. Yes. Because then at least you could leave up counter spells, and you totally in a control deck be willing to pay the extra mana to just get that instant speed factor fiction. But as is, I think the Sphinx spells you cast cost two less to cast is completely irrelevant. Sphinx is not even like a very common creature type. Um, maybe as we go on, I'll, there's a ton in here. I don't think there are. So maybe this is more of like a commander fun mythic or something. Build your little Sphinx commander deck, but it's not even like a very fun commander either. So here's the thing at four mana, I think the card's insane, right? You're basically three for wanting your opponent at four mana. Um, at five mana, it's like reasonable. I think I would have liked to see this card at five mana. Maybe they felt that five mana was too pushed. And so that's why they have to go to six mana, but, like, is this that much better than Glorybringer? I, I know I keep bringing that up, but that card's insane, right? And that's it's, in, rare... it's in the best color in Amonkhet. We're, we're moving into a standard format in, like, two months after, like, Ixalan comes out or whatever. In two months, it's just going to be four sets, Amonkhet, Hour of Devastation, Ixalan, and, oh, and, like, one more or whatever. So, like, we're moving into a standard format where Glorybringer's going to be the best card, where red's going to be the best color. Couldn't this have just been five mana? Like, oh, you play your Glorybringer, well, I pay this, you kill my guy, but at least I get, like, two extra cards off the Factor Fiction. Like, doesn't that seem kind of fair? I don't know. Yeah. I think it needed to... They should have just gotten rid of that whole Sphinx spells you cast cost two less to cast. It should have been, like, six mana for a Mahamodi Jin, five, six, or a four, six. It should have been Consecrate. I mean, this is worse than Consecrated Sphinx. I would much rather play a six mana, four, four, that just every time they draw, I draw two. Yeah, I mean, that was just so much more exciting. And it was, yeah, and it was a 4 6 too. So this this is less exciting to me. Um, obviously, just a complete limited bomb. Anytime you're playing a win con that's going to get you super card advantage and limited, you're going to likely win the game. For but sure. as far as constructed goes, I'm just, I'm underwhelmed enough where I don't even think a control deck really wants to take a turn off from being able to counter or remove something just to get some card advantage in a 4 4. I, I agree. I, I don't know. I don't. Maybe there's gonna be like a Sphinx Bitter Blossom that like makes two two Sphinxes. I don't know. I don't know either. Next is Razaketh the Foul Blooded. So this is he's got a crazy name. Five and three black. He's a legendary demon. He's an eight eight flyer. So eight mana, eight eight flying trample. Pay two life. Sack another creature. Search your library for a card and put that card in your hand. Then shuffle your library. So this card is this card is pretty fun looking. Mm -hmm. at, at the very least, this card is fun looking. Um, you, the problem is the activated ability is sweet, but it's not like this is a res deck target because you still need another creature to sacrifice to even get the demonic tutor effect and you have to have some life. So yes, I don't feel like this card's busted. Um, are, am I going to slam first pick it and limited? Actually, that's a reasonable question too. Am I going to slam first pick an eight mana demon in limited? My gut says no, because, uh, uh, I was not slamming Sandworm Convergence towards the end, but that also was a faster format. Um, no, I don't think I'm going to first pick this, to be honest, in Limited. I'm not first picking it, um, but it might be good with Inspiring Statuary and Standard. We'll have to see. I'm, I'm sure I'll test that out at some point. Um, you know, just like cast it on turn four or whatever with a bunch of artifacts somehow. But yeah, I don't see this being great in Limited. In your pre-release pools, it's interesting. It's very interesting in your pre-release pools. It depends how much black you have. It depends how much fixing you have. Um, it also depends if there's anything really good to go get. Like, if you're playing this and you're sacrificing, like, a 2-2 to go get a 3-3, I don't know if that makes it. But yeah, an you 8 gotta get your other rare. 
But an 8-8 flying trampler in itself is great. So maybe if you yeah. can cast this reliably, it's, it's good. But I don't know. And, I mean, can you ever really reliably cast your 8 drops that have 3 black mana? Not That's especially. So this is going to be not that, honestly, not that uh, amazing, unfortunately. But let's go to the next one. We've got Neheb the Eternal. So this has a brand new mechanic we can talk about. Also, just an amazingly awesome creature type. 3 and 2 red for a 4-6 legendary zombie minotaur warrior. It has Afflict 3. So Afflict is, whenever this creature becomes blocked, defending player loses life equal to whatever the Afflict number is. So in this case, they lose 3 life whenever this is blocked. And keep in mind, uh, each blocker, I assume they lose 3 life for each one, right? Because it becomes blocked by 3 creatures, they would lose 9 life. Is that correct? Um, whenever this creature becomes blocked... I don't think so. I think it's, it's any amount of blockers and they only lose three. That's th the that's I the real question with Afflict. I have no idea. Does, I mean, someone has to know. Okay. I, you continue talking. You, I'll look you it up. Look that up. I'm going to discuss this card. Uh, either way, I think Afflict is a really strong mechanic. Whether it's the way I said it, where it's any blocker, for every blocker they lose three, or all blockers they lose three, Afflict is one of those mechanics where they get to a certain life total, they just lose if they don't have removal for it. They can't block it, they can't not block it. So your opponent's at three life. You attack with Neheb, they're dead. They can't block it, they can't take Neheb. So that alone makes Afflict a really, really strong mechanic. It just, there's a certain point where the inevitability means that they're dead. They just do not have the life total to block or not block it. So that's pretty cool. Uh, Neheb also has, at the beginning of your post-combat main phase, add a red to your mana pool for each one life your opponent, your opponents have lost this turn. So that's kind of cool, too. It ramps post-combat after it attacks for four. And a five mana four six is a fantastic body. Um, so I really like this card a lot. This is a limited bomb. Constructed playable? Probably not because it's five mana. But absolute limited bomb. Um, what do you think, Sam? Did you make yeah. any discoveries on Afflict? Yeah, if multiple creatures block a creature with Afflict, Afflict triggers only once. Okay, good to know. Yep. Still. Also, it's so. it's, a, it's a lose life ability, so it's not damage. Um, yeah, that, that's, that's the only major thing. Okay, good to know. So, say they're at three life, and you have Neheb. You attack them. They're dead. They yeah. need removal. They can't block it. They can't take it. They're dead. So also, I really like... yeah, also for newer players, keep in mind that you can't, like, in that scenario, you can't just, like, block with a lifelink creature and survive because Afflict triggers before damage. Yeah, that's a good point, too. So they can't even gain the life in time. Wow. Yeah, so Afflict seems like a real aggressive mechanic. But as Sam mentioned, if the format slows down, kind of like we anticipate it slowing down, because it'd be tough to be as quick as Triple Amonkhet was, um, perhaps Afflict will not be as devastating as it would have been in, you know, Triple Amonkhet. Can you, can you imagine it in Triple Amonkhet? It would have been just insane. Um, so next we have Majestic Mirror Arc. Mirror Arc. Four and a green, star, star, chimera, mythic. Its power and toughness are each equal to twice the number of creatures you control, which is pretty insane. At the beginning of each combat, if you control a creature with flying, it gains flying. Same is true for First Strike, Double Strike, Death Touch, Haste, Hexproof, Indestructible, Lifelink, Menace, Reach, Trample, and Vigilance. So it gains your other creature's abilities, and it's twice the number of creatures you control for power and toughness. Uh, limited Bomb, let's just get that out of the way. Super Limited Bomb. Constructed Playable, once again, I, I, I presume no. No. We're, uh, we're 0 for 8. Okay, so... Uh, I mean, maybe Neheb's good, is... but... We're, I mean, yeah. Maybe Neheb's good, but I'm playing Glorybringer. How many 5 drops can I fit in my 22 land red aggro decks? Like, I'm playing Glorybringer. Yes. This, I mean, Glorybringer kills Gideon, and it kills Chandra, and it kills Nissa's, and it kills Liana's. This is, like, kind of fun. If this had haste, we could make an argument if Neheb had haste, but it doesn't. We're 0 for 8. Now... What that also means, interesting point, is that when the format moves to just being like four or five sets, when like Shadows and um, the Elder and the uh, Zendikar sets, when all those rotate out in standard, then I think the format's going to be really slow and really powered down. 
because the like we just have mythics like these that are slow and like a little less powerful than we would like. Or, as I'm also speculating, maybe the format just gets really fast and all the two mana one ones or whatever at common or uncommon reign supreme. We don't know yet, but for the current standard meta, I'm fairly sure we're 0 for 8. Okay. Well, moving on. We're on to rares now. Oketra's Last Mercy. One and I think this is a cycle. A little three color cycle here. So we have Oketra's Last Mercy. One and two white sorcery. It's a rare. Your life total becomes equal to your starting life total. And lands you control don't untap during your next untap step. So in uh, right off the bat, in 2HG, does your life total become 40 again? Because you have a shared life total with your teammate, right? Yeah, and in 2HG, it's 30 is the shared life total. Um, oh, yeah. So wait, is it Commander is 40? Yeah, Commander's 40. In both those formats, your life total resets. In Commander, your Commander damage does not reset, though. So let's say your opponent's Commander did 19 to you, and you're at 21. You can play this, you go to 40, but if their Commander does one more damage to you, you die. You still die, okay. Good to know, though, and that's why they had to specify starting life total instead of saying your life total becomes 20 or whatever. Lands you control don't untap during your next untap step. So you're going to see in the cycle, this is the downside to these efficiently costed spells that have a really strong ability. So the next one is the blue one, Kefnet's Last Word. It's two and two blue. It's just a it's just a mind control, uh, which formerly did not have a downside, but now at rare, lands you control don't untap during your next untap step. So if that's any indication for um, how strong mind control is... Uh, Mind Control was the four mana one, right? Or maybe I'm thinking of... Control Magic. Control Magic. It's a Control Magic. Was Control Magic rare, too? I wonder if that was, like, an uncommon at the time. That would have been I, funny. I don't know at the time. I know when it was reprinted, it was it was a rare. Okay. But still, now this is just Control Magic with a downside. I guess, no, you can take artifacts and enchantments, too. Not just creatures. All right. Slightly so they did better. add some... They added a little bit more to it. And then finally, Bantu's Last Reckoning, which is one and two black sorcery, rare. Destroy all creatures. Lands you control. Don't untap during your next untap step. So out of these three, Bantu's Last Reckoning immediately stands out to me as the most exciting. Destroy all creatures at three mana is a very strong effect. However, lands you control. Don't untap. So you do kind of have to take a little bit of a turn off uh, from this. All three of these seem very... Oh, uh, another reason Kefnet's last word would be better than Control Magic is that it's a sorcery. It's not actually a enchantment, so therefore they can't really interact with it uh, as easily. You know, they can't, like, destroy the Control Magic and get their thing back. Uh, so that is important. Oketra's Last Mercy s strikes me as the least exciting. Usually life gain is not super relevant. And this isn't even life gain. This is just reset your life total. Um... So in order, I go Bantu's Last Reckoning, most exciting, then Kefnet's Last Word, then Oketra's Last Mercy. So Bantu's Last Reckoning will has got to make standard, right? It has to make standard constructed. No? Look, I mean, first of all, we have two more that you're skipping over, and I think one of them is going to be in standard. But also, um, I, look, it's not going to be a bomb in modern. People are just going to play Damnation for one more mana. In, what about, stan what about in standard... standard? Well, like, what's what's the play pattern? You're going to play blue-black control. Sure, blue-black control hasn't been a thing in a while. Maybe you're playing Grixis control with Nicol Bolas at the top. Who knows? And, like, your opponent's going to play a 2 and a 3 drop. You're going to play this. Your opponent's going to play a 4 drop. You're not going to do anything. They're going to play a 5 drop, and then they're going to kill you. I, I don't know. Um, maybe you can play this on turn 5 and then have, like, Essence Scatter up. Maybe that's a thing you can do. I don't think it's a 4 of, though. I think it's, like... A two of, maybe. Because if your hand gets clogged with these, you're going to die, right? And if you have to play it on turn three or turn four, you're probably going to die too. So I think you have to play it turn five, turn six, turn seven. At that point, you could just play white for Fumigate. Or you could play like two of these because, you're, you know, then you're more likely to have one in your hand later on. Okay. I at least refuse to believe this won't see standard play. This has to see standard play. All right, all right, all right. Creatures all right. for three mana. <laughs> but you're right. It's probably it's. I I think I I would totally agree with the fact that as a four of it does seem too dangerous. But yeah, I mean it's just too efficient. Like if you're missing a land drop, sometimes you're just gonna need to be like, well, at least I have my three mana to play this and make them you know not kill me right away. Right, but um, it's worse than fumigate, and no one's playing fumigate as a four of. Well, it's worse. Well, I think it's debatable worse than Fumigate. I want to see it in action first because Fumigate's five Fair mana. Enough. 
Right, Fumigate's five mana, but if you're playing a 25-26 land deck and you have cycling, right? So you're you're basically playing like a 29 land deck. I mean, the, the amount of times you don't get to five mana is like 10 or 12 percent of the time like you can keep two landers on the draw and be fine in this format just because you have so many cyclers but i mean fumigate's better against aggro decks you want to gain life and you need to untap the next turn to play a win con like i think fumigate's better and no one's playing that as a four of so i have a hard time imagining this is a four of maybe it is if it's good it's good i don't know i guess i don't know either but i assumed it's better maybe you're talking me out of it next is ronus's last stand Two green, create a 5-4 green snake creature token, lands you control. What the? What are you kidding me? This one's okay. good. <laughs> yeah, I'm, that one's I'm excited. <laughs> this, one seems a li- this one seems a little bit more powerful than the other ones we've seen. My god. Two mana, 5-4. What the? Okay, I mean, granted, your turn. you basically take your turn three off, I guess. So, a little bit of a disadvantage don't, there. Don't You're basically... What? Don't think about it that way. Think about it as think about it as you play two of these on turn four, and then you have one card in hand, and so you're not really taking turn five off anyways. Yeah, but I want to play this on turn two. All right, fine. I want to do. Play it on turn two. Want... See if I care. Go I want a it. five four on turn two. All right, you did it for two green. That's so good. What's the one I'm missing? Oh wait, it's this Hazaret's Undying Fury. I see. Yeah. Okay. They had it all in the same row. I just it, this one for some reason didn't look like the rest of the cycle. Maybe it's because it's so expensive and you can't untap. What does it do? Shuffle your library, then exile the top four cards. You may cast any number of non-land cards with converted mana cost five or less from among them without paying their mana costs. Lands you control don't untap. So potentially just get a bunch of bomb five or less. Hey, get four glory bringers. That Sam will understand that, right? You get you get four glory bringers off the top, and you get to just swing for sixteen. That's pretty good. Yeah, unfortunately, with this card, like, your average deck is 40% lands or whatever. Yeah. And so you're going to get, like, two and a half spells you can cast. I so, agree. It's you know. not good enough. But Anything random that also turns off your untap, random plus turn off your untap step, that's way too brutal. And it's the most expensive one. Yeah. <laughs> so, in order, I go Ronus's Last Stand, mm-hmm. Bantu's Last Reckoning, yep. Kefnet's Last Word. Yep. If, uh, and then the other two, I guess, are equally bad. I'm not excited about either one. Yeah, I think Hazret's Undying Fury has a slightly better chance than Oketra's Last Mercy. But um, I could see Oketra's Last Mercy being a sideboard card against aggro decks. Like, that could happen. And I don't yeah, think I guess that's that... true. And it's so, only yeah. three mana. But yeah, the curve I'm really excited about with Ronus's Last Stand is like... One mana, you don't even need to do anything. You can play an Aether Hub, you can play a Traverse, whatever you want to do. You can also play like a Kessig Prowler. Turn two, you play like a Long Tusk Cub. Turn three, you play a Rishgar, pump them both up. Turn four, you play like Long Tusk Cub, Ronus's Last Stand. And then you're like, I don't need to t- untap on turn five anyways. I have 18 power on the battlefield and you can't stop me. Like, th- those are the curves I get excited about. I... I agree. Ronus's last stand seems very, very powerful. So I can't imagine that one's absolutely going to see. You can make ten away. power on turn four. Ten yeah, power on turn four. Just cast two I of mean, them. Five power on turn two is still unheard of. That's yes. unheard of with no yes. downside. Other the, the no creature downside. That's the crazy part. Like you can afford to take a turn off if they have to deal with a five four on turn two. That's just insane. Especially if you can like. If you can like play a swamp and then like fatal push their guy or whatever on turn three, then you're not yeah. really taking it off anyways. You Still know? do something, yeah. Right. All right. Next uh, is another cycle. We've got the hour of cycle. So let's go through each one. Hour of revelation is three and three white. It's a sorcery. It costs three less to cast if there are ten or more non-land permanents on the battlefield. Destroy all non-land permanents. So this is kind of like the new. Uh, what's that card from modern called that like blows up all the creatures that I can't think of? It's like eight and a red, and it costs one less for each creature on the battlefield, and it deals like 13 damage to each oh, creature. Oh, Blasphemous Act. Yes. So this is kind of like a Blasphemous Act in white. To it. it's, I think it seems worse, but it does destroy all non-land permanents. So something that deals with Planeswalkers, at the very least, this strikes me as like a good sideboard card against maybe a control, some sort of Planeswalker control deck. If you can resolve it, then at least you can blow up their uh, Planeswalkers, interact with multiple things, non-creature permanence at the same time which is nice 
I actually like this in control. Um, by the way, in in draft, we didn't really talk about like draft or sealed for all, any of the reckoning cards. We should have. I think for the reckoning cards, the green one's insane, the blue one's insane, the black one's insane, and you might even play the red one just to like get a few free spells. In draft or sealed, I think this is a bomb. I mean, it, it's just as good as any other sweeper. Plus. There sometimes just are 10 or more non-land permanents on the field in draft because, you know, there's such a limited amounts of removal. Yeah, so you can play three to do it. Yeah, that's yes. pretty nice. So I think you can play this in draft and sealed for sure. I would love to have this in one of my pre-release decks this weekend. I'm, I'm pretty excited about this. I think it's going to see standard play. Okay. Next, we have Hour of Eternity, three blue and double X. Exile X target creature cards from your graveyard. For each card exiled this way, create a token that's a copy of that card, except it's a 4-4 black zombie. So let's do the math here. 5 mana, 1 4 four. 7, 2 four fours. 9, 3 four fours. It doesn't really feel busted until you get to, like, 9 mana, which is a lot of mana, Sam. That's a lot. Yeah. Now, am I still going to play this in my limited decks? Probably, right? Like a 5 uh, mana 4-4 four four uh, isn't the worst? I'm going to do it to be cute, but I'm I'm not super happy about playing triple blue yeah. plus 2x plus having cards in the grave, creature cards in the graveyard, in your graveyard, not even your opponent's. And so it's like a million mana plus I have a bunch of creature cards in my graveyard nets me probably three to four, four, four black zombies, which I admit is strong, but you have to get so late in the game. I mean, the 11 mana is probably... I mean, in limited, the best you're going to hope for is like the nine mana one, right? I really yeah. think you're going to be you're going to be hoping to get the nine mana three four four black zombies, which let's face it is really not that busted for nine mana. No, it's not that busted, and you can bounce them. This is my question. I just noticed this. I'm sure, like, I know I've been playing a lot of Magic, and people have been talking to me about the spoilers, but I like have such a bad memory, and I'm so focused on like standard right now and modern that I haven't been focusing enough on hour, but. At the bottom of the card, where the artist usually is, where it says Story Spotlight, and then yeah. across from it, it says MTG Story. Is that a new thing we're doing? Um, is that just to like signal to new players or to people that are interested in the story that like this is something that has a lot to do with the mythology or whatever? Like, what's what's the idea behind that? I didn't even notice that. I hope a commenter can uh, answer that question because that is very interesting. You're, I mean, that would make the most sense. Yeah, it has to do with the story of the set. That would be cool. I, but it's got it in a certain order, right? Because it says like one, two, three, four, five. So, uh, but it's just organizing the. It just says the hour of revelation is the first story, and then it's hour of glory, and the, so yeah. Anybody who can answer that question, please do. Uh, moving on, we. I'm sorry, we're tight for time here. We are just really trying to explode through all these mythics and rares. Next is hour of glory, three and a black. Rare instant, exile target creature. If that creature was a god, its controller reveals his or her hand and exiles all cards from it with the same name as that creature. Okay, well, in limited, yeah, it's not going to happen in terms of getting more than one card out of their hand. Um, but it's still very playable in limited. Is this playable in constructed just because it's four mana exile target creature? Yeah, I mean, I'm playing like to the slaughter in some of my black decks just to kill Ronis. I mean... I, I think this okay. card's good. You don't mind paying four mana occasionally, especially in control decks. This isn't a four of, but like you can play one or two of these. You can definitely sideboard it instead of like to the slaughter. But in limited, I think this is a first pick a lot yeah, of the it's time. A first pick. Yeah, it's better it's than not a um, busted. It's it's not a busted first pick in terms of rare removal that we've seen in the past. Um, but it's not Doomblade. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I would still rather play. I'd rather play Doomblade at Common than Hour of Glory, just well, to get you, the exile effect. Well, would you rather play this or Magma Spray? Uh, I'd rather play. Uh, I'd probably rather play this because I do think the format is going to slow down. I okay. do like Magma Spray a lot though, and Magma yeah. Spray, they both deal with Embalm, which is nice. Um, I. I guess I would probably still go Hour of Glory. It's nicer to just be able to deal with anything for four mana. Um, would you rather have Hour of Glory or Cast Out, though? Cast Out, right? I'd yeah, I'd rather have Cast Out. I mean, yeah, what, exactly. what, what's the difference? Cast Out does the same thing. I mean, I guess they can destroy your Cast Out, but that no, doesn't happen as often. No, Cast Out can deal often. with more than creatures. Cast Out gets the, the non-land permanence. Right, and so, also you can cycle it. Like, I, I think those yeah, abilities cast make just, Cast Out better. 
cast out on uncommon way better than hour of glory at rare all right moving on hour of devastation three and two red rare sorcery all creatures lose indestructible until end of turn hour of devastation deals five damage to each creature and each non bolus planeswalker Bef let me just preface by saying all of these cards that deal with indestructible i've never liked by the way i've never mm -hmm. liked the idea like wouldn't that just make the thing not indestructible? <laughs> like, isn't that just, like, completely contrary to what indestructible means? I don't know. Isn't it kind of like trying to defeat a boss in a video game? Like, you know how the boss is, like, like you know, you make it to level 38 in your, you know, Mike Tyson punch-out game, and there's, like, some random boss that you have to beat, and they can only lose to, like, a certain combo? This card is just that certain combo, right? Like, you okay. have to be able to beat the game somehow, I think. All right. Give me some perspective, because I just think of the word indestructible, and I'm like, hey, indestructible means it can't be destroyed, man. But, all right, this... Right, but then we can't a... put indestructible on anything. Like, th then you have to get rid of it if there's no way to deal with it. I guess... Exile I mean, do you hate still exile effects? It, though. So you don't mind exile effects. You just hate that everything is losing indestructible. Yeah, see, okay. that's just... Something that about it seems like, uh, I don't know, tacky or something. It's, like, ugly to read. I can okay. accept that you're exiling an indestructible creature? Because if you think about it that way, it's like, it's not actually dead. It's just mm -hmm. exiled, right? It's gone. It's indestructible some in some other plane. But this is like, hey, you're no longer indestructible, and now we're going to deal damage to you. I don't know. Something seems weird about it. But That's let's fair. get to the actual card itself. Is this card good? Yeah. I mean, it's in limited, five mana, five damage to each creature. This is a board wipe. And for yep. fatties, it's a board wipe, too. Yep. Now, is this constructed playable? I almost think it is. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, you, you get to kill all their, like, you get to kill all their planeswalkers. You get to kill all their creatures. I think this is insane. Um, it gets around, uh, I mean, th th one of the best cards in standard, if not the best card right now, is Bristling Hydra. This kills Bristling Hydra, right? Um, because it doesn't... Oh, no, is each... No, I guess it doesn't kill Bristling Hydra, because each is a target. Why, why not? Isn't each a target effect? It was said it didn't... No, I think it's until in the turn. So, even if they loses... Wait, all creatures lose indestructible until in turn. So, you're saying they cast this, and then what? In response, they make it indestructible? No, they, they make it... They still have to let hexproof. it resolve first, though. I'm saying they make it hexproof. Wait, if it it doesn't matter if it's hexproof. It's not targeting it, right? Isn't each a target? No, it's not. Oh, for sure. okay. It is not a target. This okay. still definitely deals with hexproof and indestructible. Well, th well, then this is probably going to be very good in standard, I would imagine. Okay. Yeah, a little Planeswalker killer on top of it. This this card's sweet. Now, is it a four of if you're trying to control, or is it a two of? What is it? It's five mana. I think it's probably a three of, or a two or three. I don't think it's four, and I don't think it's one. I think you want to build around this the way you build around, like, a Fumigate or something. Now, what okay. I will say is, have we ever had a card that was the name of the set before? Oh, yeah. No kidding. No, we have. They have done that, but I thought they weren't going to do that anymore. When was the last time? they actually have done that before. Because um, it, like, it has Tempest, to be before my time. Maybe Tempest or something? Okay. I forget. I'm probably wrong, but I do know that they have done that before. They have That's made a card that is the name of the, in the set before, but I haven't <laughs> seen it in a long time. That was a good. I can't believe I didn't even notice that. That is weird. Uh, and it's a super playable card too. So it's Hour of Devastation from the Hour of Devastation set is going to be played quite <laughs> yeah. a bit. Okay, next we have Hour of Promise. Four and a green sorcery rare. Search your library for up to two land cards. Put them on the battlefield tapped. Then shuffle your library. Then if you control three or more deserts create two 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 black zombie creature tokens so two land cards i'm going to find my two deserts i'm going to put them on the battlefield tapped then i'm going to shuffle my library then i have to have three deserts before i get two 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 black zombies and it costs me five mana at sorcery speed why am i terribly unexcited by this card sam because it's it's i mean i don't even think it's playable in draft it's it's what the, what is this? Are you kidding me? This is, Are there this like is trusted atrocious. deserts in this set or something? That's so unexciting. The question is, is, if you play this and then you play Nissa's Renewal on the next turn, can you cast a turn seven Ulamog? Uh, Nissa's wait, Nissa's Renewal lets you uh, get all the ones back from your graveyard. Is that what it is, or what is it? Yeah, it lets you get all the lands back from your graveyard. Or um, yeah, there's another Nissa's card. I don't know. Like, could you play like, could you play like a two mana ramp guy? 
and then you could play like a three mana spring to mind, and then you could play this on four, and then another ramp spell on five, and then cast Ulamog on six. Can we do that? Maybe we can. I don't know. I've gone so deep that my mind can't wrap around it. All I know is this. All, all, I'm terribly unexcited by this card. And... I'm just trying to find any way for it to be good. I, I don't know. <laughs> it is the only the only thing I'll, I'll say that actually is relevant about this card. So I'm trying to give it credit where credit is not due. Is uh, search a library for up to two land cards now. Most of the time, ramp spells are basic land cards. We're not able to interact and find any land card. Now, that does mean you can find any non-basic land card. There's a lot of powerful non-basic land cards. Mm -hmm. So is it worth paying five mana to find two of them? Not in my mind. But uh, have we seen land cards historically that are busted together? Yes, like Kessig Wolf Run, Ink Moth uh, Nexus, something like that. So it lets you find the most powerful non-basic lands in the game but at five mana it's just not breakable in my mind it's, it's too all expensive. right let's continue with some rares next we have overwhelming splendor yet another mythic six and two white it's an it's a aura curse enchant player creatures enchanted player controls lose all abilities and have base power and toughness one one enchanted player can't activate abilities that aren't mana abilities or loyalty abilities so they can still it says that aren't mana abilities or loyalty abilities which means they can still use their planeswalker loyalty abilities but is this worth eight mana to give your opponent a bunch of one ones that's the real question is this good enough for limited would that be powerful enough of effect i'm still saying no i don't think so I am going to play this in Constructed because I think it's going to be fun to, like, block other 1-1s with my 3-bin inspectors, but I, I don't think I'm going to do it. I mean, I, I don't think it's good enough in Limited, I should say. Now now that we've said that, I, of course, someone's going to refer to this video when I lose to it in Limited. Oh, but 100%. But I want to remind them that I'm going to play Forsake the Worldly, and I'm just going to make them right big again with my Common Cycle spell. I'm going to bring them right back after they pay 8 mana for this nonsense. So, yes, I don't think this card is playable or good or that exciting, nor do I think it's a mythic. I don't even, I'm not even giving it that. I'm not excited enough by it where I would say, hey, mythic. I would expect it to be a little bit cheaper to be a mythic. Well, I think it has to be a mythic because it's like, you know, these big, huge spells they don't usually make at um, at rare. rare. Like, yeah. You know, it's it's another card that probably is here because it like tells a story and it's kind of cool and it's probably really really fun commander, but you know they don't want it in every single draft because you know you can't have too many just like bad rares in draft I guess so you yeah, have to make some not. of these mythics. All right, moving on. Champion of Wits, two and a blue, two one Naga Wizard rare. When it enters the battlefield, draw cards equal to its power. If you do, discard two cards. So comes in for three mana two one draw two discard two you ha it's a maze so you don't have to eternalize for seven exile this card from your graveyard and you get this is the first time we've seen eternalize so eternalize is similar to embalm except instead of coming back as a token of itself it's a token of itself except it's a four four black zombie so it gets all of the abilities but it's a 4-4 instead of a 2-1. Now, let's talk about what happens when you eternalize this guy. It comes back as a 4-4, and then you draw 4 discard 2. So, this card is cool. With This this one interacts synergistically very well with its own eternalize ability. Is this a first pick? I think so, actually. A 3-mana 2-1 that draw 2, discard 2, in a format where we're going to have Embalm and other eternalized creatures, and maybe even Aftermath. This seems like a very fun limited card. Now, is it good enough for Constructed, Sam? Do we want to pay 3 for a 2-1, draw 2, discard 2 with Eternalize? I don't think so. I mean, I think in the decks where you would want this, you'd rather just play Cathartic Reunion because it's 1 less mana. Um... Like, the decks that want this are wanting it because they want to cheat things into play. And if you're cheating things into play, you're probably not then, like, paying seven mana to eternalize this. So yeah. I, I don't think so. Okay. But I would agree that I'm, I'm playing this in draft. I'm not going to take it over a random kill spell. But, uh, I mean, uh, I'll take it over, like, a decent uncommon, probably. Yeah, I think it's actually deceptively good for limited... Or, like I said, because there's so much graveyard, there's so much graveyard stuff going on. For Eternalize, sure. Aftermath, and Embalm, to name three. Plus, on top of that, you have the little mini Amonkhet uh, graveyard or uh, instant and sorcery out of your graveyard theme, right? You've got like the Warfire Javelinier and the Enigma Drake and the uh, Cryptic Serpent or whatever. So, uh, 
Granted, it's only one pack, but still, it's cool. Next is Apocalypse Demon, 4 and 2 black, star star, rare demon. It has flying, its power and toughness are each equal to the number of cards in your graveyard, which is actually very good because cards in total cards in your graveyard. At the beginning of your upkeep, tap Apocalypse Demon unless you sacrifice another creature. So there's the rub, Sam. You have to sack a creature every turn. But let's talk about how that interacts positively with itself. You're sacking the creature and making itself more powerful, right? Because you have a creature going to your graveyard. I mean, I'm going to fling this at somebody before the sacrifice effect happens, so it's it's okay to me. Yeah. Oh, I've been flinging so much, my friend, in Triple Almond Cat. <laughs> That's, like, rapidly become my favorite card in the set. I've flung so many times. I'm 100% fling this at somebody. There's no... Like, if there's a way for me to make... I don't know. It's... Yeah, if there's a way for me to make, like, a mostly spells Enigma Drake Apocalypse, Apocalypse <laughs> Demon fling deck, then it's happening. All right. <laughs> all right that's a good point it'd be pretty you'd be pretty hard at, well you have nickel bolus in that deck you're gonna be playing grixis anyway so why not just go crazy for so, sure yeah i actually don't think this card is that busted considering yeah. it requires you to have cards in your graveyard and it has a downside so this one makes me a little bit sad to be honest it seems a bit overpriced at six mana to me i'm, at I'm probably not playing it in a lot of my decks i mean maybe i'll play it with it at the pre-release because if it's really bad i can just take it out of my deck um but like after that after i realize how bad it is i don't think i'm gonna be playing with it much i mean it does have evasion but i mean what do you do when you have two creatures and you're banking on sacking that cr i guess you just have to tap apocalypse team at least it doesn't like at least the downside's not like it deals damage to you or you have to sacrifice it. It's just it becomes tapped. So Right. Then you just play uh Vizier of uh yeah, the yeah, blue yeah. Vizier and on tap and sands. still yeah, yeah. still attack him and then you're good. Uh okay. So yeah, I'm I'm a little bit underwhelmed by this one, but actually I I think I probably am gonna end up taking it and playing it in draft just to get a feel for it. I'll probably lose to it and be really mad. Someone's going to have a 10-10 Apocalypse Demon flying over top of my guys and killing me, and I'm going to be really upset. But I'm not going to be... I, I'm still not super on board with it. Next, we have Imminent Doom. Two and a red enchantment. It enters the battlefield with a Doom counter on it. Whenever you cast the spell with Convert Mana Cost equal to the number of Doom counters on Imminent Doom, Imminent Doom deals that much damage to our creature or player, then put a Doom counter on it. This card is fun. Can you build around this? equal to the number of counter I'm, I'm like reading this card eight times just to make sure i understand what it does so it um, comes in with one let's just right. let's play it through okay you play it it comes in with one say you cast uh magma spray on it it goes up to two right mm -hmm. so then you cast your two drop it goes up to three you play your three drop so you Say you've sequenced perfectly. You go one, two, three. It's only dealt six damage to your opponent. Right, I mean, but it's, it's, it's creature or player. So you can you can play this, and then you can, on the next turn, Magma Spray a 4-4, four, four, kill the 4-4. Four, four. Oh, no. Yeah, because then it has two counters. So then you can kill the 4-4. Four, four. Then you can wait, play... Wait, no, like... it deals how much... Wait, no, then you put the counter on it. So if you Magma Spray, you only can deal three to it, right? Oh, right. Because it puts it on after you've dealt the damage. So Magma Spray would deal three to a creature, maybe, and then the next one you deal two to your opponent. The fact that you mentioned that it does deal it to creatures, too, makes it a little more exciting, but this card is not quite doing it for me. I'm not excited. I'm, I'm not playing it, for sure. Yeah, I don't think so, either. Next uh, is Resilient Kenra. One and a green. 2-2 two, two Jackal Wizard. It's a rare. And when it enters the battlefield, you may have target creature get plus X, plus X until a turn where X is resilient Kenra's power. And then it eternalizes for six. So it, it, two mana, two, two, that gives plus two, plus two when it enters? I like this card. This, this card's, card's good. Yeah, this is the type of card that I love. It's aggressive. It's a first pick. It comes back. Like, this is insane. Yeah. I think it's that's great. That's a constructed playable? So that's the thing, right? If you're playing your, uh, whatever that last card was, if you're playing your Ronus's last stand or whatever, you know, on turn four, like on like if you play a two drop, a three drop, why on turn four can't you just play like this, Ronus's last stand, you know, beef a guy up? If they fumigate you, you just bring this back and then you have another threat. Like, I don't know. I like this card a lot. Seems reasonable. I think this card is definitely constructed playable. 
Next, uh, at worst, is a bear, right? How bad could a grizzly bear be? And it's not even at worst a bear. It's at worst like a bear that comes back and makes a 4-4. Yeah, so it's still still good. Next yeah. is Jeru with eyes open. So we've seen Jeru's resolve. Let's see what the man himself does. 3-2 and two white, 4-3 vigilance, human warrior, rare. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, search your library for a planeswalker card, reveal it, put it in your hand, shuffle your library. If a source would deal damage to a planeswalker, you control, prevent one of that damage. This card's sweet. Search up a planeswalker? I love that. This has got to be a, a... I mean, in limited, it's not super exciting. It is no. a 4-3 Vigilance. But uh, what do you think? Search up a Planeswalker? Good enough? Find my Gideon? Yeah, so in uh, Standard, I've been playing these, like, 10 or 12 Planeswalker decks with uh, Oath of Nyssa. And this is this is a solid one or two of, like, because there are so many Planeswalkers that do different things, you know, Tamiyo, Nahiri, Chandra, um, Sorin, like, because there are so many Planeswalkers that do different things... This is kind of like your tutor for like which planeswalker you need for the certain situation. So I think this is pretty good. Is there like if you have one planeswalker, are you playing this in your limited decks? Uh yeah. I totally would. So you so all you need from it to go from a zero to a playable is one planeswalker. I think it's playable without a planeswalker. Five mana four three vigilance is good enough and limited for me. Okay. So I'm obviously I'm not a I would rather it be a three four. Three four lends itself to vigilance better in my opinion than four three. Um but uh still I would totally play it in limited if I didn't have a planeswalker. For five Just mana? Fear in them. With like colossipedes and stuff running around. Only out of one pack, right? Yeah, I so guess. I don't have to worry about it too much. We'll see. I think <laughs> it, right. it's still ab- I think it's still absolutely playable uh okay. without a planeswalker in limited. Alright, alright. Vigilance is pretty good. Next is Nimble Obstructionist. Now, this card is very exciting. Two and a blue, three, one, Flash Flyer. Already good. Uh, already great. On top of that, cycle for two and a blue, and when you cycle it, counter target activated or triggered ability you don't control. So, uh, yeah, versatility at its finest. In a color, notoriously scary with versatile spells. So, I think Nimble Obstructionist absolutely sees constructed play, and it's a bomb unlimited. I love this card. Yeah, what I'm going to say is I think it's great and limited. I think it's going to see some constructed play. My friend recently in a group text asked me if he should buy like 50 of these. I said hold off. Um, I just think three mana is a little too much for like modern, for to see like a lot of modern play where the stifle effect would be great. That being said, I, I think it's going to see a ton of standard play. I think it's going to be very, very good in draft. I don't know if this is like a 100% first pick and draft. It is just like a three mana, three one flyer, even though that is very, very good, of course. But yeah. I think this is a solid like two, three, four pick and draft. If blue is open, you can definitely get this like picks two, three, four, maybe even five. So I think it's good. I'm excited about this card. This one seems like one to keep your eye on, honestly. Amit Eternal is two and a black, five, five, zombie crocodile demon. All right, this rapidly just became the cool, the absolute <laughs> coolest creature type in the game of magic. We just found it. Zombie crocodile demon. Two, all right, so five, five. Can we make it a horse, three. too? Wait, what was that? Can we make it a horse, too? Yeah, zombie crocodile demon horse. So five, five, yeah, because then it's indestructible with the mythic we saw earlier. That'd be great. It's got a flick three, and it's a five, five for three. Okay, what's the downside? Show me. Whenever an opponent casts a spell, put a minus one, minus one counter on it. And whenever a man at Amit Eternal deals combat damage to a player, remove all minus one, minus one counters from it. What the? Oh, my God. Sam, this card. This card doesn't seem fair. Buy it now. I, I don't know if you should really buy it now. This is kind of what I said before, where, like, when the mythics are so slow and clunky, the aggro cards are going to be insane. We're seeing that with Nibble Instructionist and then with Amit Eternal. I mean, you needed, like, Hapatra is going to be insane, I think. Like, you just play Hapatra, you play this. Whenever your opponent casts a spell, you get a 1-1 one, one snake. Or if you have the uh, the three-man enchantment out, Nest of Scarabs. Whenever your opponent yeah. casts a spell, you just get a 1-1. One, one, and then you just attack with this. If they trade with it, whatever. If they kill it, they took three damage, like... I think this card's very good. You probably yeah. don't even need to play a minus one, minus one counter theme deck for this to be good. It's probably just no, good anyways. I don't anyways. think so either. Although, let's compare it to, because it's actually pretty close, let's compare it to Plague Belcher, which you did actually play a little bit of. So what do you what do you think compared to Plague Belcher? Because that's a three-mana 5-4 Menace. Yep. But 
you did have this to put minus one minus one counters on it immediately, whereas this just is a five five. So, right. So Plague Belcher had a lot of the same things going for it. I played it in two decks of mine. I played it in the Hapatra deck and I played it in the Zombies deck. Right, the zombies deck because it was obviously a zombie. It triggered whenever a zombie died. It was it was good against sweepers and things like that. Amit the Eternal isn't as good against sweepers, or Amit Eternal isn't as good against sweepers. But I think it's just a better card overall. Starting out as a five five, doing three damage basically every time it attacks, and then also having minus one minus one counter synergy is interesting. Don't play this with Winding Constrictor. Just stop it. But I, I think it's good everywhere else. <laughs> yeah, that'd be sad. I'd love to see that non-bow in action. Right. I've just seen that happen by accident. Like, people just play a Winding Constrictor. They'll play a Hapatra. They just won't notice. Like, or, you know, not a Hapatra, but they'll play, like, a, you know, the, the, whatever it is. They'll, they'll the play, like, an exemplar put Neg one, Neg one counters on something. Yeah. And then... Play Belcher just dies as you play it. Just three mana dies. Yeah. All right, I've next is uh, Chaos Maw. Five and two red for a 6-6. Six, six. Uh, and it's a Hellion. And when it enters the battlefield, it deals three damage to each other creature. So, I don't like my seven drops in limited, but this one is pretty good. Three damage to each creature does see, and it's each other. Uh, this does seem like it kills most things, and it's a win con. So, would I first pick it? That's the real question. I feel like I would. But basically, because if I'm gonna pay seven mana, I need my seven mana to kill everything else. I'm I'm taking it. I'm first picking it. Everything that it doesn't kill, it probably trades with or better. Um, aside from like a greater sandworm, which is also seven mana. So I'm first picking this. I'm very happy to get it. If I'm in red, I'm very happy to get it. Like the issue with it, obviously, is is that if you're in a red aggressive deck, you don't necessarily want to play a six six yeah. that kills all your aggro things. But um, if the format's slow, like we think it might be, then like sweeping away all their blockers and having a six six on the battlefield is probably pretty good. See, the weird thing was, Sam, I would draft aggro decks and then play Sweltering Suns, and I was still on the fence about that, because it was yep. like, well, Sweltering Suns does probably kill all my opponent's things, and there's going to be board states where I'm just happy to blow up all their things, and it cycles, so what could go wrong? But it still felt like I was holding on to a Sweltering Sun too long in my aggro deck. And really, let's face it, can aggro decks afford to not just be spewing out their hands by turn five? Right, like, if you have this in your hand, oftentimes it's just worse than, like, a two-mana two-two, right? Like, you're just, like, messing up your curve sometimes in order yeah. to, like, have this in your deck. Hmm. So it's tough. Because, like you said, red is, you know, historically aggressive. So my pinks... Well, maybe it'll shift, though. Maybe the Grixis control is the real deal, even in Limited. Maybe that's a real thing. We'll maybe everyone's see. just going to be... Maybe there's going to be, like, four Grixis control drafters at every table. If if blue, black, and red are the primary colors of this format, then I think that, you know, even though you were joking, I think that absolutely could be the case. We'll see. Next is Uncaged the Menagerie. Two green and X. Mythic Sorcery, search your library for up to X creature cards with different names that each have converted mana cost X. Reveal them, put them into your hand, then shuffle your library. Uh, so it lets you search up creature cards and of a bunch. They have to have different names. They have to have the same converted mana cost. You have to reveal them, obviously, to prove that you're not lying, and then you get to put them in your hand. Yeah, I mean, um, yeah, it's, it's good, I think. Right? I like it's good. I feel like most of the time... I don't know. What am I paying, though? Am I paying, like, five mana and getting three three-costing things? Yeah, you're, 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 like, you're playing, like, a turn two guy. You're playing, like, a turn three Rishkar. And then on turn four, you're just paying, you're paying, like, six mana. You're getting, like, four whatever it is. Or you're getting, or you're getting, like, three Pride Sovereigns. No, you can't get three of the same thing, though. They have to have different uh, names. Yeah, this is an issue. I, I don't know. I still think it's good, though. It's like that. You know what it is? It's the, uh, what was the uh, the artifact that you sacked a creature and then you got the next creature at the higher converted mana? Uh, birthing Pod. It's birthing like pod. a, it's kind of like a Birthing Pod. It's similar to Birthing Pod in that you have a bunch of different uh, types of creatures but in this case, you want a bunch of different types of creatures that are the same converted mana cost. Right. So first off, let's state that it's probably really good and limited. Yeah. Because you're not often having like three of the same card. Yeah, of course, a lot of the time you have like two of the same two drop. But in limited, 
um, you know, where if, if you just build a deck around like three drops, basically like two and three drops, and then you just have like five different three drops, five different two drops, and maybe like, you know, whatever, like yeah. you can just pay five mana and get nine power on, you know, nine power into your hand or whatever. Yeah. In standard, it's interesting because you're basically trying to build, you would want to be building around a certain CMC, probably three or four to make it the most worth it. And so then the question is, is can you find enough things that do different stuff? Like Manglehorn is something that you could search for. Tireless Tracker is something you could search for. But can you find enough of those cards? I don't know. I feel like this is going to actually see some constructive play. There's going to be some dude who makes a deck that's uncaged the Menagerie, and then it's going to be the real deal. If you can get this Mythic for like a dollar, I actually don't... I. This actually, you know, surprisingly, Sam, I think this feels like a card to invest in yeah. because it's going to be dirt cheap. So really buy 10 of them for 10 bucks total and maybe you could make something out. It's it's a cheap investment that could have a high payoff, I feel like. I agree. I mean, I, I was kind of joking about the Pride Sovereigns, even though that ends up not being possible. But like, especially in a deck, like in a deck like the Cat Tribal deck that everyone's talking about right now. Oh my God, the Cat Tribal is going to be huge. If you just get like, and I know we're doing way too much standard talk on the, you know, on the review this time. We're sorry about that. It's all my it, fault. But no, it's fine. I think some people will dig that too. But like, if you can, like, if you can get, you know, let's say you're playing zombies and you can get like. Let's say you some for some reason have to play green black zombies so that you can play on Cage the Menagerie, and you're getting like, I don't know, like a Lord of the Accursed, a Plague Belcher. What what's the other three drop? Lord of the Accursed, Plague Belcher, Diagraph Colossus, and then like, isn't that pretty good? I, I don't know. Yeah, no, it is. I think it is. Totally is. <laughs> That's actually a lot of fun too, because then you've got a bunch of synergistic three drops that you can bring out together. I like it. So no, this is spicy. Right. If Uncaged Menagerie is dirt cheap, because usually what happens is Mythics, you know, just generally have an inflated price right at the beginning of a format. But if this goes real cheap after like two weeks, and it, maybe you can get it for like a buck or like maybe two bucks, I'd consider it. There's a chance that this could, uh, someone could discover a real spicy deck with this card and for do sure. something cool. 100%. Okay. Next we have Angel of Condemnation, two and two white. 3-3, three, three, Flying Vigilance, Rare Angel, 2 and a white, exile another target creature, return that card to the battlefield under its owner's control to begin the next end step. 2 and a white, exert Angel of Condemnation, exile another target creature until Angel of Condemnation leaves the battlefield. So here we go. 4 mana, 3-3, three, three, Flying Vigilance. Amazing. <laughs> Activated ability, exile, blink something other than itself. Great. Yep. Get, it, get, your act, get your into the battlefield effects again. Or reset another exert creature. Then, or two and a protect white. itself from removal, right? No, it's, oh, it's, no, it's another. another. Got you. But still, okay. two and a white, tap it, exert it, exile another target creature until it leaves. So this card, easily, easily a bomb and limited, super powered. It's one of those things where, if not dealt with, it's just going to deal with all of your all of your opponent's insane creatures. But is this actually good enough for Constructed? Because it's got... I think the fact that it's got the Vigilance and then it can take stuff out is actually kind of relevant. I think the Exert is the problem. I think if the bottom ability, the, um, the like, you know, Oblivion Ring ability, let's say, wasn't, or, you know, if you didn't have to Exert, the fact that you have to take a turn off attacking with this is kind of the issue, I think. Like, if you could just, like, play this and then they play their, you know, Nahiri and, like, plus, and then you can, like attack steal their nahiri or you know exile their nahiri i think that would be good but the fact that you just like play this and then if you want to o-ring something you have to take the entire turn off makes us way too fair for standard i think yeah you're probably right but it's fun looking uh, oh yeah bomb. for sure and i mean first pickable in draft you're yeah. going to build your sealed pools around yeah. it 100 percent. so still a very very fun powerful card absolutely but you might be right possibly likely not quite good enough for constructed Next is Fraying Sanity, two and a blue, it's a curse. Enchant player, at the beginning of each instep, Enchant player puts the top X cards of his or her library into his or her graveyard, where X is the number of cards put into that graveyard from anywhere this turn. Unfortunately, this card has the problem of you need to do things, you need to do other things to mill them, and then you don't even, it's like way too, 
difficult, I think, to mm-hmm. make work. Yeah, this is a card that people have been talking a lot about in my uh, in my Twitch channel because they want to make Mill like good in all formats. I don't think it's good in draft. I don't think you should pick it highly, and I don't yeah. think it's good in standard. I, I'm not sold. I've never been sold on that many Mill cards, though. It seems what like are the mill too cards big of a task right now to... in standard, though, Sam. Anything relevant? That are anything good? The, there's no mill cards. There's no like mill deck. The one that people are talking about with this is Start of the Wake. How much? What does that do again? It's like mill thirteen or whatever. Okay, so then it just lets you double that. So it doubles all your mill spells, basically. Right. So like you could just you know you could play this, then you could play Start of the Wake, mill twenty six, Start of the Wake, you in the game, basically. I guess. I. Uh, it's kind of. It's too. I don't know. You're right. Mill is always just the thing where it's like you have this idea, right? You wake up in the middle of the night. It's three in the morning, and you're like, "Oh my god! I just discovered the mill deck that's gonna break the format." And then you play it, and your dreams are crushed. It never, it never plays the way that you envision it playing. Just never. And like, so I have to say, the most popular clip on my Twitch channel is of me double archive trapping somebody off a of turn one fetch land. Um. <laughs> That, you know, just milling them 26 on turn one and then winning the game on turn two. Th- that's my most popular clip on Twitch right now. And okay. even even though I'm most known for playing a mill deck, I still don't like this card. So okay. That's, that's what I'm well, going to say. Well, you heard it from uh, Sam's mouth to your ears, folks. There you have it. Next yeah. is Torment of Hailfire. Two black and X, sorcery rare. Repeat the following process X times. Ooh, this sounds spicy already. Each opponent loses three life unless that player sacrifices a non-land permanent or discards a card. I don't know, Sam. They get a lot of options there. That's my problem with it. But let's just play it through. You pay five mana. You get this three times. They lose three life or they sack a non-land permanent or they discard a card. Okay. Ah. I, mm, I don't know. Let's say seven mana, so you get to repeat it five times. I don't know, Sam. Are you going to be mad at me if I tell you I'm not completely sold on this card? I mean, I'm not going to be mad at you, but you're just a liar. <laughs> I'm not, it's, I don't know. It's not as exciting as I kind of thought it would be. I don't really? like that they get three options. There's Isn't, three options there. But there are three bad options. Like, you get to, you get to mind twist them. No, but they choose. Oh, right. So then they can, like, just lose. You're saying you could just, like, cast it for five. They could just, like, lose nine life, not die, and then, like, kill this you. This is an example of a card that looks so sweet. And then when you play it and they do, they've just, they, they narrowly do everything perfectly. They're going to be like, okay, I'm going to lose six. I'm going to discard this land, and I'm going to sack this one one. And you're like, well, Damn it, I just paid like seven mana. How come I don't feel like I got my values worth? And it's because they get the choice. I don't like it when my opponents get choices. It, it hurts. So here's the thing. If we just got a bunch of these altered so that the each opponent loses three life thing was crossed out, would you like the card better? You either get to like mind rot or damnation them, basically? That's a good point, actually. I almost do think it would be better if they didn't have the lose three life option. Because well, no, it would definitely be better, be... but would it be would it be broken at that point? Broken? Probably not. Probably not broken, but certainly more playable. As is, I honestly, folks, you're hearing it here first. I don't think I first picked this in draft. I don't, I don't either. think I do. I don't either. But maybe I'll be proven wrong. This is a card. This is an example of a card. There was something like this, too, and I hope someone reminds me. There was a card that was very similar to this from a couple sets back, and it was also black, and it had the same thing, where it was like you pump a bunch into it, and they got this choice. And I hated the card then, and every time I would lose to it, I would get the commenters are like, I told you it's good, and then every time I'd beat it, everyone would be quiet about it. But I'm telling you, I beat the card more than I lost to it, and I don't, and I think this is going to be just like that. All right. Okay, next... Next is uh, Earthshaker Kenra. One in a red, 2-1 Jackal Warrior Rare. It's got haste. And when it enters the battlefield, target creature with power less than or equal to it can't block this turn. This card's great. And then it's got Eternalize for six. So we just make a deck of the 2-mana two 2-2 two, two green one that pumps and then the 2-mana two 2-1 two, hasty that makes things unable to block. Just Eternalize all day. I think so. I mean, the, yeah. I, I, look, Eternalize is, is a little insane. 
Um, I thought Embalm was sweet and limited. I think Eternalize is just like an upgrade, obviously. And so what if you're, you know, you're putting it on a 2-2? Like, I don't know. Are, are you telling me I get to have... I get to have, like, my 2-1 haste for 2, which is, like, my favorite card of all time. And then I also get to make a 4-4 when it dies. That's just insane. A 4-4 haste that makes a 4 power or less creature unable to block? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> this card yeah. is insane. Yes. I love this card. This will definitely see constructive play, too. I would think. I don't know why a red deck wouldn't want to jam a hasty creature that turns off blockers. Aren't people playing the 3-2 uh, the that turns off blockers? blockers too the on crop crasher it's got to be seen play in red deck yeah if you're if you're playing on crop crasher you're playing this okay yeah absolutely all right next is uh pride sovereign two and a green two two rare cat i love the cat creatures gets plus one plus one for each other cat you control i love cats that interact with cats and then one white tap exert it create two cats with lifelink this card is fantastic yeah I just like care about the exert yeah, find all your sacred cats, find all your regal caracals, like, get them all in a basket, you know, go on a picnic, have fun, like, I, I don't know, whatever. Is, is cat tribal a thing, Sam? Can we just make cat yeah, tribal a standard thing? we're just jamming four pride sovins and four regal caracals. Now, what I think is going to have to happen is I think it's still tier one and a half or tier two. I think you need one more lord. I think you need, like, you have metallic mimic, that's fine, right? Yeah. You have Pride Sovereign. You have Regal Caracal. Can we get, like, we? you have Gideon? Maybe that's enough. Maybe you have Nyssa? Maybe that's enough. But, like, you know what would make this insane? Can I get two green, one white, enchantment, or one green, one white, one other, enchantment, all cats gets plus one, plus one. That's yeah. all I need. I want a cat. Uh, it could be two mana. It could be a green and a white, all cats get plus one, plus one. And I don't think it would be Done. busted either. Done, yeah. There you go. I th I agree. Pride Sovereign's sweet, though. That's a limited bomb. Just make lifelinkers. Every other turn, I'm going to make two 1-1 one, one lifelinkers. How do you ever die? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It's so annoying to deal with. That and card then, is so good. And then after, like, so you play it, whatever. They do something. It doesn't matter. It's turn three. You're not going to die. The next turn, they attack with their 3-3. Three, three. You block, make two 1-1s, one, kill their 3-3. Three, three. And then, like, the turn after, you have two 1-1 one, one lifelinkers to block. And then the turn after that... You just like block with everything, make two more one ones, like a block with a six six. I don't, I don't this even know how you is die. So fun. Yeah. Yeah, that card is fantastic. All right, next is uh, Solemnity. Solemnity. How do you pronounce? It? I should know because I know it's solemn and it's itty. So is it Solemnity? Solemn Solemnity. I've been told it's Solemnity or Solemnity or something right, we're like doing that. This right now. Live, we're going to dictionary.com, we're typing it in, we're going to hear that pronunciation. Here we go. Oh. Solemnity. Solemnity. You heard Solemnity. it here, folks. Okay. Solemnity. Two and a white, enchantment rare. Players can't get counters. Counters can't be put on artifacts, creatures, enchantments, or lands. So, just off the bat, not a limited card I'm going to be taking. But, uh, what are the implications of this card, Sam, for Constructed? All right, do you want me to make everybody mad, or do you want to make everybody mad? Uh, you make everyone mad. This card is terrible. <laughs> All right. Um, I don't think I mean, anybody would be... I don't think anybody's upset, Sam. No, what is I, this supposed to be good with? The black cards that put minus one, minus one counters on things? No, it's supposed to be good against um, Team or Energy and Black Ring counters, which are the two most popular decks in the format right now. Everybody okay. on my Twitch channel, Sam, hey, what? Or, you know, whatever. I know I'm mentioning my Twitch channel a lot, but that's just the only interaction I have with Magic players. Everybody's always like, Sam, like... Team or energy? Is it going to be terrible now? And then I'm like, what? I'm going to play my Long Tusk Cub. You're going to play a tap land. Then I'm going to play like my Rish Car and make two three threes. And then because I played in a tune Thaether attack for four, you're going to play Solemnity or whatever. I'm going to play Bristling Hydra attack for seven. You're going to be a ten. I'm going to have three creatures. Like good luck. Yeah. I don't know. Is it that good? Like sure, it shuts off Winding Constrictor, but then they just get like a free attack step. I'm I'm not sure this is good. I I mean you can just like I mean you can kill it too if you want. You can just like play cast out or play forsake the worldly or play root out if you really want to get crazy. Like I don't know. All right, that, Sam. Well, let's think about it the it. other way, Sam. How about okay. so, how about solemnity and you're playing like Amid Eternal and Soul Stinger and uh, Plague Belcher. You're playing solemnity and then you play Plague Belcher. You get a three mana five four menace. 
Oh, see, we haven't thought about it this way. This way's sweet. I like this. Then it's a build around where your dudes don't have disadvantages anymore. Okay, what what if we turn one, Black Lotus this into play, and then we turn two, play that uh, Exemplar of Strength, the 4-4. Four, four. We just get turn two 4-4s. Four, oh, yeah. That, that don't turn tap two, our mana. Turn two 4-4s. Four, four I mean, that's of course good. So I agree. That's the best use of Black Lotus I think I've ever heard in my life. Yeah, probably. All right. It's close. So this Next could be is... good. This, this is interesting. Do we just... I mean, is Soul Stinger good enough, though, as, like, a 4-5? Um, no, it's four? just a 4-mana four 4-5. Four Defiant Great Maw would be the one you want, the 3-mana four 4-5. Five. 3-mana four 4-5 five is efficient enough. That's fair. 4-mana four 4-5, not good enough. Got you. But Exemplar of Strength is actually the one that we sh I should have mentioned in the first place. The 2-mana four 4-4 four is actually pretty good. Right, like, if you just play this, and then you just play 8 power, you play, like... Or you play 7 power, you play, like, a Channeler Initiate and an Exemplar of Strength. Oh, yeah, Channeler like Initiate. That's a great one. There you go. Channeler yeah. Initiate's a great one, too. Um, okay. Swarm Intelligence is the next one. Six and a blue. It's an enchantment or rare. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, you may copy that spell. You may choose new targets for the copy. So these are cards that always look sweet on the surface, are insane in formats like Commander, but are they good enough for Limited? No. Are they good enough for Constructed? Probably not. Outside of Commander. So right. am, am I probably accurate about that one, Sam? Yeah, 100%. Okay. In Commander, though, I really want to see... Uh, post your builds on that in Sam's Twitch channel, and then he can come back to me and be like, hey, someone showed me some sweet Commander brews. Yeah, or just post it in the comment section down below. Alex will have a look at it. Do you play okay. any Commander on your own? <laughs> yeah, that's true. Just uh, show me your tapped-out Commander deck with Swarm Intelligence, and I'll be like, you know what? That is sweet. Okay, do you, next do you is... Play any, by the way, do you play any Commander or no? I, very little. When I play okay. it... I'm like, oh, this is kind of fun. And then I play one game, and I'm like, you know what? I'll take a little break from Commander for like a month. And then I never get back into it. And then like a year later, a friend will be like, hey, do you want to play Commander? Yes. So once a year, I play Commander. Okay. And then I get a little tired of it. And then I come back a year later and do it again. Gotcha. So next is uh, Dream Stealer. Two and a black, one, two, rare human wizard with Menace. When it deals combat damage to a player, that player discards that many cards. Wow, that's actually pretty good. And then Eternalize? Hmm. I like this card. This seems like one of those real feel-bad cards to play against. It can just be devastating. If they pump it, brute strength on this little bad boy, how about you discard four cards? This is just has the opportunity to just wreck your opponent. Just wreck them. If this was a 2-1, it'd be too good, I think. Yeah. The mind rot per hit. <laughs> so, I mean, even though it's a 3-mana 1-2, the menace is relevant. The ability is very relevant. This might suffer the same fate that Cephalid Constable did, where you read Cephalid Constable and you're like, wait a second, that card's broken. But then it like doesn't actually break as hard as you expect it to. Cephalid Constable is a 1 and 2 blue, 1-1. One, one, and whenever it deals damage to a player, you get to bounce permanence mm. uh, equal to its power. Got you. So it seemed insane when you read it. You're like, what? So I just pump it and then bounce all their lands and their stuff. But it turned out a 3-mana 1-1 one, one, was not good enough but in this thing's case it's got menace and it has eternalized so it comes back so this one i'm actually convinced is good enough yeah i mean especially in draft or limited or like you j even if you just have to like a block with it and fog for a turn and then you get to bring back a four four yeah a four four menace that makes them discard four if it hits this card is yeah. ridiculous i think so or you just or you just put it in your graveyard somehow. You like unburden yourself, get it into your graveyard and then bring it back. I don't you don't need to unburden yourself, Sam. You can just play that that thing of wits and discard it or whatever. Oh, right. Draw two discard too. Yeah, that's uh, true. Yeah, or your or cathartic reunion, which you said you liked anyway. So By the way, that's... have you unburdened yourself in Amonkhet Limited or no? Did you did you do the I combo? Never have. Never you didn't did. unburden yourself ever. Never did. Oh wow. Never did. Right. You know what I did see multiple times, though, Sam? You know Never Return, that card? Yeah. I saw people screw up Return at least three times, where they rapidly clicked Return, and then they clicked their own Return in their graveyard, and they didn't get the 2-2 zombie, and then they were like, uh, what just happened? And I had to explain to them <laughs> yeah. in the chat window that they didn't click a different card in a different graveyard, so they exiled their own card, and then there wasn't a target to get their 2-2 zombie. Yep. Isn't that crazy? Yep. That makes Multiple sense. Multiple times I saw that. Great job. Well uh, played. Next is Wildfire Eternal. Three and a red. 
one four zombie. I'm loving these creature types. Zombie jackal cleric. Like, would you ever hire a cleric that was a zombie jackal? I don't think I would ever trust a zombie jackal to do cleric responsibilities. One four afflict four, which is the highest afflict we've seen. And whenever it attacks and isn't blocked, you may cast an instant or sorcery card from your hand without paying its mana cost. So this is one of those cards where it seems really good because you get free spells, but then in limited when you play it, you're never going to have an instant or sorcery in your hand um, that you're going to be able to play uh, that you're going to care about. Like, if you have a brute strength, are you really that upset that you have to pay two mana to cast your brute strength? Or do you really not care that, okay, it, it let you cast your brute strength for free? You yeah, the I mean? most this does is like, Deal, deal four to them and die, I think. I, I don't think this is great and limited. I don't think it is either, even though it's got a flicked four. Most of the time it's just going to hit them for one because they never want to block it. So it's a four mana, like, not even unblockable one four. Not good enough. I'm, nope. I'm not convinced that I'm going to have instant, enough instant sorceries in my deck. And I don't think it's good enough for constructed either. It's just I agree. not exciting enough. Maybe if, yeah, I don't know, some build around with like a 13 mana instant or sorcery that you can play for free. Other than that, not exciting. Next is Ramunap Hydra. Three and a green, three, three, snake hydra creature. It's a rare. Vigilance Reach Trample. It gets plus one, plus one as long as you control a desert. It gets plus one, plus one as long as there's a desert card in your graveyard. So, uh, four mana. I, I like it just because it's got a slew of abilities on it. What do you think? Yeah, it seems sweet. Cards like these kind of have to be playable in draft. Like, just a 3-3 three, three, yeah. or 4 isn't that bad. Plus, sometimes you're going to have a desert or you're going to have two deserts or whatever, and then all of a sudden it's going to be like a 5-5 five, five Vigilance Reach Trample. Yeah. I think it's good enough. It's not there in standard, of course. I mean, even if even yeah. at its peak, you know, um, even at a 5-5, five, five, it's it's not good enough. But in draft, it probably is. I think it's so. I think it's even first pick that's a that's a good spread of abilities actually for sure okay next is adorned pouncer oh my god awesome cat look at its tail one in a white one one double strike and then it has eternalized for five wow uh not busted but i think i probably first picked this i don't know why i wouldn't it's got double strike so it's good with like this is insane with brute strength but by the way uh you pay this on turn two, turn three. I'll attack you, brute strength. I've got a four power double striker, swing, double strike trampler swinging at you. Just you're gonna take damage. So I like this card actually. And then eternalize turns into a five mana four four double strike. That's gonna put your opponent away pretty quick. So I like it. What do you think? Yeah, it's super sweet. Now here, here's the question: Is it good enough with like Pride Sovereign and Regal Caracal? To what mate for the cat deck oh it's yeah oh it's going in it's jammed in the cat deck it's okay we're in the there deck. it's absolutely right. in there uh and because it's a zombie cat when it comes back too which is even more amazing it's not just a zombie it's a zombie cat when it comes back right it's which true. is a very scary creature type so can you have can you have regular cats and zombie cats on the battlefield at the same time or do all the zombie cats eat all the regular cats and then it's a cat fight that's a good point good? do zombie cats eat humans for sustenance or do they eat other do they eat living cats for sustenance right that's, like do you have, have to tap pride sovereign every turn just so that your zombie cats can eat those cats can tokens? eat the regular cats yeah that's yeah. a good point the exert's gonna cost you on that one if you're not <laughs> careful you gotta be careful okay so next, is, next rare is Ramu Nap Excavator. Two and a green, two, three, Naga Cleric rare. You may play land cards from your graveyard. Well, that's kind of cool. So it's got the uh, 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 Crucible Yep, Crucible of Worlds. Okay. What do you think of this? You'd know for Constructed. I, I mean, I think it's insane and modern. Um, I think it's pretty pretty good in Legacy, probably, as well. Um, really? Well, people are, already play, people are already playing Crucible of Worlds. But would and... you rather ah? Uh, but do people want it attached to an artifact or attached to a two-three creature? Right. So, so that's the interesting thing is we're not going to know until people start playing it because we're not going to you know you you're not going to know how the meta reacts and stuff. What I will say is most of the decks that want Crucible of Worlds are playing green mana for life of the from life from the loam. Okay. So you're not. You know, you're not it's like not costing playing... you anything to put this in the same deck as Crucible. It's not costing you anything. It does turn on their fatal pushes and their lightning bolts, so maybe that's bad. 
But I mean, if if I mean, if I get if I'm just wastelanding you every turn, and then I play Ramunak Excavator, and then I get to wasteland you again, are you really going to yeah, be able to lightning bolt me? I don't know. That's pretty good. Yeah, that's a good point. But in terms of limited, yeah, I'm not super excited about this card. I had actually, what's cool is I could, it, um, in limited, it plays well with evolving wilds. Actually, really well with evolving wilds in limited. It does, and it might even play well enough with Evolving Wilds in Standard that I want to give it a shot. Like, if you're trying to play, let's say let's say you really are trying to, you know, ramp to 6 mana or 8 mana or whatever, and you just throw this in your random, like, green-red ramp deck, and you just play 4 Evolving Wilds, and maybe you're playing, like, a Cathartic Reunion or some way to get, you know, maybe this is in your Nissa's Renewal deck where you're bringing all your lands back. Yeah. Um, and you're just like playing your four evolving wilds. You you have some other way to get lands into your graveyard, whether it be cathartic reunion, tormenting voice, whatever. And then you're just like bring lands back every turn. You're trying to get to Ulamog, something like that. It, it could yeah. work. It could I'm work. excited. I, I actually I'm taking this a little higher now that I realize it plays well with evolving wilds, even in limited. So you yeah. could definitely get one of those out of your pack three. Um, so that's kind of cool. And I guess it works well with the rare cycle lands to a certain extent, too. You can cycle them and then still play them from your graveyard. Not too bad. For sure. Um, okay. Next rare we're looking at is... I think we're done. No? No way. Did we get through them all, Sam? Have we successfully... What about... The... There's got to be some rare uh, artifacts and... Oh, uh, we didn't get there. You're right. Yeah, let's, let's quickly get down there to those. Uh, let's see here. Is that a rare? I can't even tell. We got two rare, or we got a few rare. Is this um, a rare? Double sided cards, and then some rare artifacts. Uh, this looks like it's rare to me. So leave one in a white instant. Yep. Return any number of target permanents you own to your hand, and then the aftermath is chance. Discard any number of cards, then draw that many cards. So I see how it's working here. I'm bouncing things to my hand at instant speed. So you want to remove, you want to kill my creatures. Well, in response, I'm going to bounce them back to my hand. And then I can discard any number of cards with this chance and draw that many. I actually like this card. It's not like a first pick for me, but this one actually does seem playable and limited. I like things that protect against removal or maybe even give you additional into the battlefield value. And then on top of that, out of the graveyard, I can get rid of my excess lands and draw more cards. So this seems fine to me, actually. What do you think? 100% agree. I think it's totally fine and limited. I think it's I think it's going to have a home in limited as well. Like, I think people are going to pick this, like, third through seventh pick and be very happy to play in their red-white decks. Yeah. Absolutely. Next one is Reason to Believe. So we've got one blue uh, Did you miss Refuse to Corroborate? Refuse to Corroborate. Oh, I missed one? Right, we'll go back and do that. So this one is one yeah. blue Scry 3. And then Believe is four in a green. Look at the top card of your library. You may put it onto the battlefield if it's a creature card. If you don't, put it into your hand. So Scry 3, and then it interacts well with its Aftermath ability because you're organizing the top of your deck. Then you get to look at it and basically put a creature onto the graveyard. Uh, pretty good, except five mana to cheat out a creature doesn't seem that busted, though, does it, Sam? It doesn't, but I'm still playing this in limited just because I think one mana scry three is probably playable in limited. Yeah, it's probably playable. It's still strict card disadvantage, though. Remember that. It's only mm -hmm. increasing your card quality. But uh, I was a big fan of Naga Oracle in Amonkhet. That card actually played really well, and that didn't give you any card advantage either. But it did give you a 2-4 body and some, some card quality advantage. So this is the one you were talking about. We've got refuse to cooperate so refuse is three in a red instant deals damage to target spells controller equal to that spells convert mana cost so this is kind of cool when your opponent's playing their seven drop and then it's got cooperate copy target instant or sorcery spell you may choose new targets for the copy so keep in mind this is one of the few ones i've seen that are double instant i don't even know if there are any other ones so seven mana in one fell swoop you can deal seven damage to them and then copy their seven mana instant or sorcery. So this card probably looks sexier than it'll actually play. Probably most of the time you'll play Refuse. You're going to pay four for their three mana spell and deal three damage to them. And then you're probably just going to be looking for an opportunity to cast Cooperate out of your graveyard. But your opponent knowing you have Cooperate makes it a little more difficult to play. But... I am kind of interested in this card for limited. I think it's pretty interesting. 
Yeah, so I think where it shines is your opponent plays a seven mana spell and then you just do fourteen to them. Right? Can't yeah, you exactly. refuse and then cooperate or fuse and exactly. then do fourteen? You pay that seven mana, perfect opportunity, and then just kill them with their own seven drop instant spell, which we haven't established what that is yet, but we'll figure it out at some point as as the format goes on. Next we have Driven to Despair. So this is one in a green sorcery. Uh, until end of turn, creatures you control gain trample, and whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player, draw a card. That's phenomenal. That's all your creatures for two mana. Yeah. And it gives them trample? I mean, trample plus that? That's insane. And then it, it has another thing on top of it, as if it needed more. Despair, one in a black. Until end of turn, creatures you control gain menace, and whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player, a player discards it. Okay, this card is like a slam first pick. Are you kidding me? And I'm playing Four it just mana. in green decks as well. Like, I would just play this in my green deck, oh, too, right? Oh, yeah. And then in my green-black, four mana, my dudes have Trample Menace. I'm going to draw cards, and you're going to discard cards. Yeah, this card's ridiculous and limited. Could that yep. see Constructed play? I don't know. Driven is a little too hard to work. But I will say that if there is a green-black aggro deck, you're going to try it. I don't know if it's good enough, but you're going to try it. It just seems... It does seem really good, though. Okay, next is Grind to Dust. Grind is one in a black sorcery. Put a minus one, minus one counter on each of up to two target creatures. And then Dust is exile on any number of target creatures that have minus one, minus one counters on them. So six mana, exile two creatures, basically, which is really good. Uh, and then maybe it's just, and, and maybe more, because we've like we said, we've got all those Amonkhet cards, as well as some cards in Hour of Devastation that just give minus one minus one counters to their own thing so i'm actually pretty impressed with this card i think it's very good and certainly worthy of first pick in limited what do you think i would agree i'm playing this in my black decks and i'm playing it of course my black white decks so yeah I, of course i think it's good very enough good. okay so now we've got just a few artifact rares abandoned sarcophagus three mana artifact rare you may cast non lane cards with cycling from your graveyard Ooh, that's cool if a card with cycling would be put into your graveyard from anywhere and it wasn't cycled exile instead I see. So it punishes you for your cards with cycling going to the graveyard without being cycled, but otherwise it would just be infinite, I suppose. But you can cast non-land cards with cycling from your graveyard. So it's kind of cool that, you know, you can do... This This makes cards like your Greater Sandworm that much better, right? Now I can yep. cycle my Greater Sandworm, and it's my win con still later in the game, right? I'm still playing this in limited. I'm playing this in all my limited decks with, like, Seven or more cyclers, probably. Six or more cyclers. Is this going to suffer the same fate as Faith of the Devoted, though? Where it looks so sexy, and then you it play might. and you're like, ugh, not good yeah. enough. Yeah, th there's a chance. But if you have, like, let's say you have, like, seven cycling creatures, this is just good, right? You just, like, you cycle a bunch of them early in the game if you have this in your opening hand. If you don't, and you play them and they die late in the game, you just bring them back. Yeah, that's true. I, I'm going to give this card a try. I'll at least give it a try. It does seem very interesting for late game plays. Um, it can be your way to get reach in the late game. I like it. For sure. We'll, we'll give it a try. I'm not convinced yet, but I do like the way that it looks. I agree. Next is God Pharaoh's Gift, 7 mana rare artifact. At the beginning of combat on your turn, you may exile a creature card from your graveyard. If you do, create a token that's a copy of that card, except it's a 4-4 black zombie, and it gains haste. So 7 mana, high cost. But it can immediately give you a 4-4 black hasty zombie. Um, and then it probably pays for itself starting on turn, the second turn with it, right? Then you get two of them that have haste or your second one that has haste, rather. I think it's good. I like, think it's playable and limited, but I'm not first picking it. Yeah, I'm not first picking it. I'm not 100% sold. The fact that it's an artifact makes it better, of course. Um, yeah. But it's interesting. Yeah, I think it's interesting, too. I'm definitely going to play it and try it out, and I know other people are going to play it and try it out, but do I think it's good enough? I'm a little unconvinced. I guess it's kind of like a little Sandworm Convergence, right? It's one mana less than Sandworm Convergence. Your opponent's flying creatures can still attack you, and it makes 4-4 four, four hasties instead of 5-5 five, five worms. Yeah. I don't know. So it seems like a card you could definitely play. At the very least, you take it for your limited deck, and it goes in your sideboard, and you play against a slower deck, and it's an awesome card to have, right? For sure. Okay. Next is Hollow 1, 5 mana, 4-4 four, four rare golem creature. It costs two less to cast for each card you've cycled or discarded this turn. And oh, yeah. And then cycles for two. So, 
you cycle something for one and then you get to pay three for a four four? No. What do you think? You you cathartic reunion all your stitch wing scabs and, and your prize amalgams and then you play it for free. Okay. So does it, I know you have that deck because I saw you jamming it the other night. Would you put this in there? Oh, I mean, I would. I don't know if it's good, but I would. And what other I cards might... do you have to discard besides uh, Cathartic Reunion in that deck? Oh, uh, so you're playing four Tormenting Voice, four Cathartic Reunion, four Stitchwing Scab, and four of the other Scab. The problem with Tormenting Voice is you still have to pay five mana after you Tormenting Voice and try and play this. Hmm? Why? Because you, you pay two for your Tormenting Voice, and then you still have to pay three for the Hollow one. So it's like you still end up paying five mana for a four four plus a. You just have to play. Voice. You just have to pay one mana afterwards, right? Cost two no, less costs for two each two less cast for each card you've cycled or discarded this turn. Because don't you only discard one for tormenting voice though? Oh, you're right. So then you have to play three after. But for like wait, how many do you discard for cathartic reunion? Three. Right? Two. Oh, wait, how many do? You... Two. two. Okay, yeah, so, so you still have to pay one for hollow one, even with mm -hmm. cathartic reunion. You're right. Maybe this isn't good enough. I don't know. I, yeah. I th immediately thought it would be. What do you think about this in like um in like a living end deck? Uh, wait, cycled or discarded it cycles for two. Living end like exiles your everything on the battlefield and then brings everything back from your graveyard to the battlefield. Isn't that how it works? Right. Oh, I see. Because those decks have all the one mana cyclers. Right. Probably still not good enough. Mm. All right. I'm unconvinced, but I would like to see someone do something with it. Those decks are sweet. I have seen the Living Index. Those are those are cool decks. I I honestly doubt they would put it in here solely because it cycles for two. Do they have any two mana? Aren't they all one mana cyclers in there? All one mana, yeah. Yeah, I think the two is too much of a drawback. If you right. cycle for one, it could totally make that deck. Uh, next is Mirage Mirror. Three mana, rare artifact, two mana... It becomes a copy of target artifact, creature, enchantment, or land until it turns. This card's phenomenal. This card is phenomenal. Yeah, I th I think it's crazy and limited. I don't yeah. know about it in constructed yet. Yeah, I guess but I, I think don't either. But I mean, I would probably first pick this in limited until proven otherwise. Like, yeah, your I opponent think I'm absolutely slamming this. Your opponent limited. attacks with something. Like your opponent just attacks with two things. You just copy the bigger one and block the smaller one, right? Yeah, this thing is sweet because. You get to change it every turn. Now, granted, you have to keep up two if you want it to do anything. But every turn, you have to keep up two to, if you want it to do anything. But yep. still, no, this card's great. I really like this card a lot. Mir Mirage Mirror seems legit, for sure. Um, do we have... Okay, then we have a Rare Land, Scavenger... Uh, uh, two Rare Lands, at least. Three. Scavenger Grounds, okay. Tap. It's a Desert, Tap to, for Colorless, two and a Tap, Sack a Desert, Exile all cards from all graveyards. Okay, I'm not that excited by that one. Nope. And then the next one is Endless Sands. Taps for colorless. It's also a desert. Two and tap. Exile target creature you control. And then four and tap. Sacrifice it. Return each creature card exiled with Endless Sands to the battlefield under its owner's control. All right, this one's a little more interesting because if you have it up, I'll tap. I'll exile my creature you're going to destroy anyway. And then I'll bring them all back at some exactly. point later in the game. So Endless Sands, I see actually seeing some limited play for sure but scavenger grounds no not that exciting i guess it turns off embalm and eternalize but i'm not i'm not actively seeking it out and nor does it seem like a rare to me it seems like it could have been an uncommon and still been fine I agree. um okay that is legitimately it we're not going to go through all the invocations thanks so much for tuning in i'm sorry we didn't do it on the commons and uncommons but uh, Sam, thanks so much for joining me. Of course, you can visit him on Twitch. That's going to be in the video description down below. Check that out. The Sam fingers pointing down. You see it. You know where to go. Check him out on Twitch. Sam is just grinding so hard. He's a regular contributor to Seems Good Magic. 80 hours next week on Twitch. Oh, God. 24 hour streams on Tuesday and Thursday. That's so, check so it crazy. Out. So, Sam doesn't like to sleep very much. He doesn't enjoy it. With he a likes pause. to just. <laughs> if you want Amaz, Amaz is views on the Pro Tour, anything like that, he's going to be on both 24-hour streams. You heard it here okay. first. Okay, very cool, Sam. All right, thanks so much, folks, for tuning in. We'll see you soon.